Hello everyone, I'm Zhe Chen from UCLA, and today I'm very glad to present our recent work entitled Efficient Kernels for Real-Time Position Decoding from In Vivo Calcium Images. This work is a joint collaboration between Computer Science Department and Department of Psychology at UCLA. This is the outline of this presentation. First, I'll briefly talk about the research background for real-time calcium image decoding. Then, I'll introduce our proposed decoding accuracy evaluation metric, followed by our proposed methods for the real-time calcium image decoding. Lastly, I'll present our evaluation of the proposed decoding methods and show our demonstration of the real-time calcium image decoding on the FPGA. First, let me introduce the research background. As shown in this photo, the UCLA Miniscope is a miniaturized one-photon calcium imaging device that can be injected at the front end of a living animal, rat, or mouse to monitor the firing activity of a large population of neurons while the animal is freely behaving in the lab environment. The LFOV, which is short for Large Field of View Miniscope, is the latest version of the UCLA miniscopes. It has a large spatial resolution of 1296 by 972 pixels and a temporal frame rate of 22.8 frames per second. Depending on the specific brain region it is monitoring, it can detect over hundreds of cells within a single recording session. This photo shows an example of the calcium image captured by the LFOV miniscope. For ease of computation, we cropped 512 by 512 region from the image, and within the cropped image region, this figure shows that over 700 cells can be detected. Recent study found that not only calcium fluorescence traces and cell activities can be extracted from the calcium images. Critical behavioral information, such as the animal's position on the linear track, can be decoded. However, the involved computation usually requires the calcium image data to be stored on the disk, and the computation process is usually time-consuming. So it is very hard to implement it in real-time for closed-loop feedback applications. In our previous work, we demonstrated that the real-time calcium image preprocessing and trace extraction can be realized on a low-cost IPGA platform. In this presentation, I'll further introduce our work on implementing the real-time calcium image decoding on IPGA and neuromorphic devices for enabling future closed-loop feedback applications. Next, I'll talk about our proposed methods. I'd like to start by first introducing our past work on the real-time calcium image preprocessing and trace extraction. We proposed an FPGA implementation that can take calcium images from the miniscope through the data acquisition hardware, and it can perform real-time motion correction, image enhancement, and trace extraction through customized FPGA acceleration. The traces can be extracted from either the cell contours or the tile contours through accumulating pixel values under the contour binary masks. We can perform the decoding from the extracted traces or directly from the raw causing images. Later on in this presentation, we will have more discussion on the comparison between these two different approaches. Before I go ahead to introduce the proposed method, I would provide more information about the decoding task. A rat ran back and forth on a 250cm linear track, whereas we captured calcium images at the CA1 region of the hippocampus of the brain. From left to right and from right to left, we divide the linear track into evenly distributed position bins and label each bin with a digit number. The decoding task is to infer which position bin the rat is at from the calcium image. The figure on the top shows a demonstration of such a decoding while the rat is running on a linear track. In order to measure the decoding accuracy, 
we came up with an evaluation metric called hit n accuracy, in which n indicates the number of position bins we count as correct decoding around the true position bin. As the figure on the bottom right shows, as we enlarge n from 1 to 9, we observe gradually increased decoding accuracy for the demonstration example shown in this slide. As discussed before, we have two ways to decode the causing image. First, we can decode from the raw causing image directly by passing all of the pre-processing steps. Second, we can first apply the causing image pre-processing and trace extraction based on either the cell contours or the tile contours. Then we create an image using the extracted trace values and then perform the decoding from the trace image. In the first method, we first rescale the raw image to a lower dimension and then train a deep CN model that is the ResNet 20 for the decoding task. In the second method, as the size of the trace image is usually small, we employ a simpler CN model to perform the decoding. Our experimental results show that the simple CN model achieves equally well decoding accuracy as the ResNet 20 model. Considering the shorter computation runtime and lower hardware cost, we decide to use the simple CN model with causing image preprocessing for our real time causing image decoding. We applied consecutive layer-wise pruning, filter-wise pruning, and weight quantization from a three-convolution layer, two fully connected layer CNN model to derive the simple CNN model. The simple CNN model has one convolution layer and one fully connected layer. The convolution layer has six filter kernels, and each kernel is in 3x3 three three size. The fully connected layer connects the flattened feature maps with 24 output nodes, and each node corresponds to a specific position bin on the linear track. Considering a 32 by 32 input size, the simple CN model has about 130,000 parameters. In real application, the input dimension depends on the number of cells or tiles, usually place cells or place tiles, involved in the decoding. Different racks may have different number of place cells or place tiles detected. This table shows a variety of number of cells detected and selected for decoding across racks. It also shows the corresponding input sizes of the trace image for different racks. Next, I'll go ahead to introduce our proposed SNM-based decoding method. Our SNN model is converted from the CN model. Our proposed SN model is rate-based, and it applies the integrate and fire neural model. In order to maintain the decoding accuracy of the CN model, we keep the convolution layer of the CNN unchanged and convert the rest of the CN model into the SNN. After the convolution and ReLU operation, the feature maps are flattened into a one-dimensional uh, vector. For each element in the vector, we apply the integrate and fire neural model to convert the value of the element into a spike train. Across evaluated time steps for the SNN, whenever the accumulated potential exceeds a threshold, it generates a spike and resets the potential. Similarly, we convert each output node into an integrate and fire neuron. Each neuron takes incoming spikes from presynaptic neurons in the previous layer. Whenever its accumulated potential exceeds the threshold, it generates a spike and resets the potential. We count the firing rate of each output neuron in the SNN, and the index of the output neuron that has the maximum firing rate indicates the decoding outcome. Next, let's move on to the evaluation and the implementation. We train CNN models across datasets collected from eight different rats. We quantized the CNN model into 8 bits and converted 8 bit CNN into 8 bit SNN model. 
we evaluated the decoding accuracy of the CNN and SNN models using the same datasets. According to our evaluation results, based on the HIT-1 and HIT-3 metrics, the SNN models has very similar decoding accuracy compared to the CN models. In order to evaluate the hardware cost, we designed and implemented the CNN and SNN-based decoding kernels on FPGA using the high-level synthesis. The table shows that across different rats, the SNN model generally has lower hardware cost. It saves 37.6% LUT, 38.7% flip-flop, and 80% TSP compared to the CNN model on average. The reason for the SNN's lower hardware cost is that it does not require multiplications as the CNN model does. We also observed the accuracy latency trade-off for the rate-based SNN. Under 32 time steps, the SNN model achieves very similar decoding accuracy compared to the CNN model. As we reduce the time steps for the SNN, the accuracy of the SNN inference will gradually drop, and the SNN inference latency will decrease linearly. There seems to be no obvious accuracy drop as we reduce the SNN inference time steps from 32 to 16. We verified the accuracy drop trend and a reduction of the SNN inference time steps using both the HIT-1 and HIT-3 accuracy metrics. This photo shows the hardware and user interface setup for the real-time calcium image processing and decoding implementation. Our CN-based calcium image decoding implementation consumes 30% LUT, 40% flip-flop, 75% DSP, and 50% VRAM on the Ultra 96 FPGA device. The figure on the right shows the breakdown of hardware usage among accelerators in our implementation. The FPGA implementation runs at 300 MHz, and under this frequency, the latency for the calcium image decoding is less than one millisecond. Here we present a demo showing the real-time calcium image decoding we implemented on the Ultra 96 FPGA. The blue curve shows the rat's real positions on the linear track, whereas the orange curve indicates the decoded positions in real time. We also implemented the converted SNN model on the neuromorphic processor Lohi. For the R8 rat, our implementation consumes 15 neuron cores. It takes 6.94 milliseconds and 0.258 millijoules to finish one SNN inference under 32 time steps. Compared to the FPGA implementation, it achieves 1.2. 56 speed up and over 50 times energy efficiency gain. In conclusion, we presented our first FPGA based real time calcium image position decoding implementation for closed loop feedback applications. We have shown that the CNN and SNN based methods could be effective for the calcium image decoding, and we provide detailed evaluation on the accuracy utilization, and latency comparison for these methods. Finally, we briefly discussed our ongoing effort to deploy the SNN inference on the neuromorphic hardware and show its advantage on the energy efficiency.
Thank you very much for your interests.